Hello everybody, today I have a new exciting tool here in the shop. I'm going to review the Flux Ador or Ador or, or Ador, I'm not really sure how to pronounce it. But what's exciting about it is that it's the world's first color printing laser cutter, first of its kind. So it can do everything that the normal laser cutter can do, but it can also print on stuff, color print. So let's dive in and I'll show you what this baby can do. It came very well packaged in a sturdy cardboard box with lots of supports and styrofoam inside. So even if your delivery guy is not the most gentle person in the world, the machine should be pretty safe. It weighs 19 kilograms. I was able to move it by myself, but it, but it feels pretty heavy. And that's because it's made from sheet metal. So it's very rigid and it feels well built. And it looks pretty stylish in my opinion. So the biggest feature of Flux Ador is that you can use it with three different modules. First one is the laser module for engraving or cutting different materials. The second module is the infrared laser, which is specifically used for engraving metals. And lastly, their brand new feature, the full color printing module. I'll cover all of them and we'll start with the laser module. The first setup of the machine was extremely simple. Once turned on, the machine greets you in every language in the world and guides you through the installation steps. It was very easy. Basically, the only thing I had to do was to remove these two screws that serve as a protection during the shipping. The laser head was now free to move and the next thing was to remove the ventilation cover and install the flexible exhaust hose. And as I said, every step was nicely explained on the screen. Lastly, I removed this screw on top, installed the laser module and then fastened it with that same screw. And basically that's all of the setup you need to do. Now it's ready to use. I also tested the beam air exhaust filter and I'll talk about it a little bit later. All right, so let's cut something. You get six of these prisms that serve as supports for your material. They have magnets on them and you can securely attach them to the bottom because it's made from metal and then place your material on top. One thing I was very happy about is the autofocus feature. You just need to bring the laser head over your material and press the autofocus button on the screen for 3 seconds. The laser head will then automatically lower until the sensor touches the material and the laser beam will now be perfectly distanced from the surface of the material. So the machine does everything by itself and you don't need to worry whether or not you set the distance correctly. A quick word about the software. Beam Studio is a free software you can download from the website. It's very simple to use and it's similar to many other graphic softwares. On the left you have the shapes or text that you can create and you can obviously import your own designs that you created in other vector programs. Pretty standard stuff. But there is this camera button in the corner and when you press it, this 8 megapixel high resolution camera will take a picture of your entire work surface. It only takes a couple of seconds to take the photo and now you can see exactly where your material is and it eliminates any guesswork from the positioning of your design. On the right, I first need to select which module I'm currently using and then set the strength. There are pre-programmed presets that can help you with choosing the strength and speed of the cutting and engraving, depending on what material you are working with. So here in my example, I'll select 3mm wood and press cut. The plastic lid acts like sunglasses basically, and it prevents you from damaging your eyes during cutting. It also prevented me from getting a good shot of the laser in action. So I risked my phone and placed it in the machine during cutting to get you the best action angle. One interesting thing is that this here is a diode laser, which is a different technology from the CO2 lasers that are featured in the other laser cutters from the Flux company. Um, they do not recommend to crank up the power of a CO2 laser more than 70%, as it will shorten its lifespan. But with diode laser, you can run it on 100% without a problem, it doesn't bother it at all. And the manual says that you will get approximately 10,000 working hours out of it. There is one little downside though, uh, with the CO2 laser you can cut transparent acrylics and with the diode laser it's not possible. I tried to do it just to see what would happen and it acted pretty weird. In the, in the manual they say you can cut black acrylics with it, but it won't work with transparent ones and I guess it has something to do with the way laser is traveling through the material, you know, it's transparent so it's, it doesn't work. I, I have no idea, I'm no scientist. But anyway, if that's something you were planning to do, you won't be able to do it with this particular one, but you can do it with their other models like uh, BMO, Beambox and Hexa. Alright, on to our second module, the 2 watt infrared laser. It's easy to switch them by just unscrewing this one screw on the top, plucking out the old module and attaching another one, and then screwing back the screw. 
The infrared laser module is used specifically for engraving on metals. I tried it out on a piece of aluminum I had, and as always you have a lot of presets here and you can just select which metal you are engraving on. In this case I selected aluminum and it came out perfectly. The text was nice and crisp. Then I tested it on a piece of steel and this was a bit more faint, but then I realized that this piece of steel had a pretty rough surface, you know, the texture was very rough. So I tried it again on a smoother piece of steel and this time it worked great. Uh, the left side is the factory finish with mill scale and on the right I sanded it to a nicer surface and it worked really good on both surfaces. So yeah, steel is another metal you can engrave. Then I tried to engrave on the bottle opener and one cool feature is that you can just import a JPEG like this one and it will automatically ignore the white background and only engrave the black parts. So the image doesn't even have to be in vectors for engraving. Uh, I placed it on the bottle opener and started the process. So the engraving was good, but it was a bit offset from the center. And then I realized that I haven't at all calibrated the camera yet. So there's this simple procedure where the laser engraves a cross on a piece of paper and then when the camera takes a photo of it, you can align them perfectly, thus calibrating the camera. And now the design should be engraved precisely where you place it in the preview. Here's a little bit of footage of engraving on the spoon. The spoon is stainless steel, of course. So this time the engraving was positioned much more precisely. And one tip I can give you is to place your material at the spot where the laser engraved the cross for the camera calibration. Because that's the center of the work area and that's the most uh, calibrated spot, if you will. So I still had a little bit of difficulty aligning it that precisely at the edges of the workspace, but at the center it worked pretty good. Again, here on the lighter you can see that it's again positioned very nicely in the center, just like I wanted. So all in all, the metal engraving module worked as advertised, uh, all of these materials produced pretty good results and the manual states that it will also work on copper, titanium, silver and gold. But I somehow misplaced my gold bar, so regrettably I couldn't test that. I, I hope you understand. Ok, and now the pièce de résistance, the print module. All of these modules are built from metal and they're heavy and well made, and this one is no exception. To print, you will also need the cartridges with four colors, cyan, magenta, yellow and key, which is black. This time we will import a picture that we want to print. And when I select the printing module, the program will understand it's a color picture. I position it where I want and now I need to separate it into four colors. It's very easy to do with just one click and then the program basically does it for you. Uh, and now you can see each color is separate. One more thing you need to do is place this icon somewhere on the material. Uh, it's a place where each cartridge will dispense a little bit of color before printing to ensure a good start of the print. It starts with black color, so that's the first cartridge I need to put in. This is the printing in real time uh, and it's pretty fast, it was about 45 seconds per color. After the black color is printed, you will get a notification on the screen to put in the next color, which was cyan. I took out the black cartridge and installed the cyan. Then you confirm it on the screen and the printer will print the next color. Third color was magenta and lastly yellow. After using the cartridges you need to put the lid on them uh, so they wouldn't dry. The cool thing about it is that now I can switch the module back to the laser cutter and cut out my design. Back in Beam Studio I used a pen tool to trace the outline around my image. Uh, of course I also needed to select that I'm now using the 20 watt laser module and I selected the preset for 3mm wood cutting. The laser then cut it according to the line I drew and I was left with a finished Hello Kitty design. Isn't it nice? The fact that you are manually switching the cartridges uh, could result with you accidentally bumping the material and then the color won't align properly. You can see here that my yellow pass is a little bit offset because of that. But I guess that's something that can be avoided with more practice, you know. I used this machine for only a couple of days when I was filming this, but I have their older model uh, Beambox Pro for two years now. And one thing I learned is that as you use it, you get more and more confident and, and you learn all the tricks on how to use it to get best results, as with uh, basically any other tool. 
But in all honesty, I have the same thought that you probably have, and that uh, wouldn't it be more practical to have all the colors in one print head and not have to switch them manually? Well, yes, it would, but I'm sure they had a pretty good reason why it's not like that. Perhaps it would be too costly to produce or something, I, I don't really know. But at the end of the day, it's not that hard to switch them. For example, both the Hello Kitty design and this one were made under 8 minutes, and that's including the printing, switching the module to the laser, and cutting. So it goes pretty fast. One job where I think the printing module could really excel is, is branding your products. Let's say you have a logo like this one, and you want to print it on something that you're selling. Printing of this logo took 23 seconds. Then I engraved the same logo with the laser module, and it took 3 minutes and 7 seconds. So printing is basically 8 times faster than engraving. You know, it could be a huge time saver if you, if you have to do it a lot. I printed this logo directly on plywood with pretty good results, but wood is a porous material and you could get this bleed on the edges. If that happens to you, they suggest to prepare the wood with transparent gesso that you can get at most hobby stores or art stores, and then it will close the pores on the wood and produce nicer prints. But as I said, for me it worked even without gesso. The color itself is called Eco Solvent Ink. It's dry immediately after the printing is done, so there's no additional drying time. They are not advertising this paint as waterproof, but I still tried rubbing it with some water and uh, all of them did pretty okay except the magenta, that one smudged a little bit. But then I had the idea to print all colors on a piece of wood and put it in a dishwasher to see what would happen. So this is after 2 hours in a dishwasher and it looks okay, it's maybe a little bit fainter but it survived. I also printed this Hello Kitty design on a t-shirt which worked pretty good. And this is the same t-shirt after one wash cycle at 30 degrees celsius. It's also a little bit fainter, but it's still here. Okay, and lastly, a few words about the Beam Air. Beam Air is an air filtering system that is connected to your machine. During cutting, the material is basically burned, so it will produce smoke and tiny dust particles which you don't want to breathe. Beam Air can be used with uh, any laser cutter with a 100mm or 4 inch exhaust, even the ones not made by Flux Company. Inside it there are 4 layers of filters. At the top there's a so-called pre-filter, then the medium efficiency filter, next is activated charcoal filter, and lastly the HEPA filter. These filters should be replaced after a certain amount of working hours, with the frequency varying for each individual filter. During my work on this video, I laser cut and engraved a bunch of stuff. And for shorter jobs it worked flawlessly, by which I mean I haven't noticed any smell in the air at all. Uh, if I did a longer cutting or engraving job, let's say 10 to 15 minutes without any breaks, then I did notice a little bit of burnt scent in the air. I don't believe it was a dangerous smoke, I suppose these filters are doing a good job of eliminating um, dangerous particles from the air. I'm just talking about slightly burned smell in the room. So if you're planning on doing bigger, more frequent jobs, I would recommend venting outside. That's the setup I have at home and I'm just venting out the window. But if you don't have the possibility of venting and you're just a hobbyist cutting something from time to time, then I think Beam Air should suit you fine. So that would be it for this video. I tried to test as many things as I could, you know, things that, that would interest me if I would watch a video. If you have any additional questions, let me know in the comments and I'll try to answer to the best of my knowledge. One additional thing that I think it's really cool uh, with this laser cutter is that it's modular. So if you are, for example, only interested in laser cutting, you can only buy the laser module and not the other two modules, which will significantly bring down your price. But if you are interested in all of them, then they offer it as a bundle and it will again be cheaper than buying them separately. And I think that's it. If you want to learn more about the uh, Flux laser cutters, uh, the link is in the description. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.